Hello and welcome to the 8th annual Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. I am Hendrik Bartanian at Brave New Hollywood hosting this special TV and online preview of the festival. This year the festival's programmers have gone to great lengths to bring you some of the best independently made films. 16 of them will have their premiere of some sorts from US to North American to world premiere right here at Mammoth Lakes. So I hope you have your passes and tickets ready because here we go. I am Hendrik Vartanian at Brave New Hollywood and I wanted to thank the sponsors that made this program possible, LA Private Car Service in Los Angeles, from rides to LAX and other local airports to corporate car service with professional drivers and reliable service. Get an instant quote online and get going with LA Private Car Service. And Brave New Hollywood also wants to thank Float Coffee Shop with two locations in Los Angeles, one in Pasadena and one in Hollywood. You definitely want to book the Float Mobile Coffee Bar, bringing you amazing tasting coffee to your parties and events. Paul, thank you very much for making time for us. Can you tell us what Mammoth Lakes Film Festival is about? So um, Mammoth Lakes, uh, actually I was, just, I was just writing some press materials about that. I, re I realized both Shira and I, Shira is the festival director and I'm the programming director. And we both came of age in the 80s in Los Angeles. So it was a time where there was this very explosive underground of, uh, it was kind of in the aftermath of punk rock and there was just a lot of art being made, art, film, music, that was um, very um, uh, uh, subversive and, and, and um, uh, dangerous. <laughs> and, uh, you know, times have changed, obviously, and, and um, things are very different now. But we wanted to, I think, bring that same spirit to, uh -huh. to Mammoth Lakes of, of having, having stuff that, that's just like really challenging the status quo and, and um, going off into you know, whatever direction a filmmaker wants to go to with their own personal expression. Yeah. yeah. As a program director, what, what's your job like for people who don't know? It's a very unique job. So for people who don't know what a person like that does. Yeah, well, um, you know, I mean, the core of it is just watching a lot, a lot, a lot of movies. And, uh, you know, just I think, I think maybe part of the effort that goes into it is just, just staying open to really receiving what the filmmakers trying to express what 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 the um what the vision is mm -hmm. and, and maybe it's something that i haven't seen before or maybe it's from a culture i'm not familiar with but i try to just be able to to feel the heart in the film and and, and what specifically it's trying to express and, and i think that that allows you to kind of have a, a real diversity of, of, of expression in the festival mm -hmm. Has the way you watch films, or maybe even select films, changed throughout the years that you've been programming festivals? I think maybe it has. I mean, I think I'm more and more open. I think maybe it's something that's happened in our society in general. Mm -hmm. Like we're more and more really embracing a, of, of diversity and different kinds of expression, and really, really, and really looking for for films that are coming from a different place, whether it's you know different um, ethnic groups, different socioeconomic groups, um, you know, even like in recent times I've even been thinking about neurodiversity, how, how like that's a lot of artists have neurodiversity and, and how that gets expressed in film and, and kind of celebrating that and, and embracing it. Uh, can you talk to me about the importance of film festivals for filmmakers? Yeah, I mean, in a sense, um, Film festivals are more important than ever, be, just because there's so much being made these days. There's just like a crazy amount of noise out there in the world, and you know, I think for um, for filmmakers, how do you know how do they connect with an audience when they're just like 
Um, and some, some filmmakers actually do. Um, they ha they've found a way to do that, but um, just going directly to, to their audience. But I think uh, for most films, just ha having, um, it gives you a certain amount of, of branding. I think it also, just getting selected by a film festival gives you some, some encouragement and, and a sense of who's resonating with your audience as opposed to um, just online, it, maybe it's a little more murky. And it's, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to market a film online too, unless you have some kind of, uh, I guess, a, 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 an existing following. So, yeah. uh, and, and I guess it's also, you know, festival gives you um, a kind of uh, acknowledgement that, 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 that allows you to move forward in your career as well. Mm -hmm. You can be like, have those little laurels on your poster and it's like, oh, you know, I've I've been recognized by by, by this festival. Right. Yeah. Um, I know this. This is probably a hard question to answer uh, because it can be su subjective. But what do you think makes a great film? Uh, I think, I think. Um, I mean, I see great films all the time, and I think it's it's a combination of. Um, a filmmaker's willingness to really go within and find something that that's that's unique and personal about how they see the world and how they and I guess even beyond that the, the essence of who they are and and and, and, and drawing on inspiration on something that's bigger than themselves where it's not about I mean I think ambition's not necessarily a bad thing but I think in filmmaking, a lot of it's very easy to get so caught up in ambition and wanting to make it and wanting to, you know, uh, be successful that that you can kind of start just trying to pander to an audience. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, filmmakers that are really committed to to that personal vision, and uh, and and are always also willing to really put in the time to. To develop their 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 vision and their style, it is a kind of a combination of finding a way to be really open to inspiration and also putting in uh, the right amount of work and, and time. Yeah. For Mammoth Lakes Film Festival this year's film festival specifically, how many films did you have to watch? Me personally, oh, I probably. Um, it must have been over four hundred. Um, because, um, and, and you know, a lot of them are, are, are shorts, so it's not like <laughs> 400 yeah. times 90 minutes. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was a lot, of, a lot of films. What is the hardest part of your job? Oh, the hardest part is every year, of course, we get um, submissions from, from film, filmmakers that we know, that we've made friends with, that we believe in, and there's always some that don't end up making it to the festival. So you have to contact those filmmakers and say, hey, you didn't get in. And it, it, it just, it feels, it feels, it's hard to do that because you, um, I think a big part of our role is to, to give these filmmakers encouragement and to, to say, no, we didn't pick your film. And, and you know we're filmmakers ourselves, so we know that it's it's always painful to to get any kind of rejection. Paul Tabrizi, thank you very much, and we'll see you at Mammoth Lakes. Yes, see you there. <laughs>
uh, but it's it's at equal times it's crushing and rewarding mm -hmm. um, because it's it's rewarding because there's the opportunity of, of getting jobs and working and and then it's crushing because you're on a daily basis auditioning and getting lots of no's and getting rejection letters but then you get one one acceptance letter or into one film festival and then it just makes your whole world you know and for people who are not in LA actors who are not pursuing an acting in LA is it a constant auditions do you go to auditions a lot how how is that nowadays yeah well i mean post covid it's actually most of your your auditions are via tapes which is actually kind of nice because you don't have to leave your house so much you just tape at home um, but yeah it's lots of running around town lots of memorizing you know a couple pages at a time and then just wiping it out of your head and going on to the next audition uh, whenever you get to work whenever you actually like get to show up on set and do a scene and get to work on a film or do a play like that feels like almost like vacation you know your job is auditioning and then when you get to do what you love that's the dream you're also a screenwriter, yeah. which is what brought you to Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. Yeah. Before that, uh, how did you add screenwriting to your acting career? Did one come before the other? Yeah, well, I, I started writing skits with my brothers when I was a kid, and then we'd act them out, and we'd get the whole neighborhood, all the neighbor kids, and then we'd perform it for the parents. Um, so we were always writing stuff like we, we grew up watching Monty Python, Search for the Holy Grail, The Flying Circus. Mm -hmm. So we'd write a lot of sketches and stupid stuff and then we'd film them on, you know, our, an old like actual tape recorders, you know. Um, and so like that's always been there a little bit. And when I moved to L.A. for acting, I wasn't necessarily writing as much. Mm -hmm. uh, but especially during COVID when there was no jobs and everything was shut down, I sort of dusted out some old scripts. I found one that I really loved, which was Mr. Cool, and I made it really good and then I submitted it to a handful of festivals and I got into some of them and I won one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so Mammoth Lakes Film Festival specifically because yeah. you submitted your screenplay there, uh, how did the film festival come onto your radar? Uh, how did the whole thing happen? Well Mammoth Lakes popped up as like one of the top 50 festivals worth your dollar. Um, it was on some list and, and I submitted for it and uh, I got in. I, I honestly didn't know if I'd get in. I, the, the script I wrote is a big broad comedy. It's not exactly film festival material. Um, and I got in and it's, Mammoth Lakes is like what every film festival should be. I've been to a handful of film festivals and Mammoth Lakes is like the perfect intersection of like it's small enough that you get to know everybody um, but it's large enough that it kind of matters you mm -hmm. know and it's not some it hasn't blown up yet into some massive corporate suit fest where everyone's there you know trading stocks movies like you know it's still about the art and it's still about the passion and you get that you know from Shira and Paul the the creatives there they really sort of make it feel like a creative circle and you really get to you know, every night you get to mingle with creative people, other writers and directors and actors, and I've, I've had a blast there. And your screenplay won the yeah. jury prize yeah. for Mr. Cool, your screenplay. What is Mr. Cool about? Mr. Cool, it's a big comedy. It's about an average college student trying to pass his classes and ask the girl out uh, when he's assigned a new roommate that semester. This guy's named Mr. Cool, and he's a flashback plague badass with a dark and mysterious past who's grief stricken from all the dark and mysterious and tragically confusing things he's had to do in the name of justice. And the two of them go on a mission and it's a big, very sort of meta self-aware comedy of coming of age story. Why do you think it won the film festival, especially because you said it's not a film festival kind of a script. Why do you think it won? I think Mr. Cool won because it's really fun and it's so much fun to read. It, it's, you know, you read it and it's like, it's, it's fun for the reader to read, you know, these, the people that are reading scripts and it's fun for the audiences. I've had a handful of readings and it's the biggest reaction you get. Um, I think it's just really tightly written and really well done. The characters are fun and you, you really get a sense of like who these people are. And um, it's one of the easiest scripts I've ever read uh, from seeing it on the page to imagining it in your head. Like it doesn't take a whole lot to be like, oh, I could totally see this. I, I think it won just because it's so fun and it's unexpected. So since winning, uh, the grand prize was I got, got a pitch meeting with the producer. So uh, I got to talk to him about Mr. Cool and he had read it and he loved the piece and they want to read more of my stuff. So Mammoth Lakes got me this introduction and now I have an in with these people and they want to read my scripts and I'm currently working on revisions of a script right now for them. Bob Rines, 
thank you very much for meeting with us yeah. and hope to see you not just at festivals but up on the big screen soon absolutely man thank you so much excellent thanks Alison Amen is a founding jury member here at Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. We visited with her to find out what she looks for in films and what makes Mammoth Lakes Film Festival a special, significant film event. Alison, thank you so much for uh, giving us this interview. Uh, can you tell us about your involvement with the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival? Sure. Um, my family and I are lucky enough to spend a lot of time in Mammoth. I, we consider ourselves partial locals. And um, a good friend of mine introduced me to Shira right before the first film festival la launched, the first year of the festival. And I was very excited to do that because I have been a long time independent film um, supporter. And I was excited to be a part of bringing that cultural kind of cultural event to Mammoth Lakes. Excellent. Mammoth Lakes is unique is a unique festival in the f types of films and the lineup that they select. What is it that you think they get right? I think there's a lot that Mammoth gets right from the scenery, which is not to be beat, and um, bringing all the filmmakers and um, other film lovers together to see the festival and create a kind of community around that, um, I think has been a real success for the festival. It's a destination and it is um, a cultural highlight of the town. Um, but I, I think that the curating and the um, programming of the film festival is really important. Um, they've given a voice to diversity, to um, both international and local films and just given the town itself an opportunity to see things and be exposed to the kinds of stories that that town doesn't always get a chance to see. You're also a judge at the yeah. festival. Uh, you being a filmmaker yourself, a film producer, what do you look for in these films? Well, I've been lucky enough to be a judge every year of the festival, and I always judge the um, uh, documentary category. Um, for me, I think I first fell in love with film through documentary. I studied anthropology in college, and I just loved the way that film could tell story, um, whether it be about culture or events, um, and sometimes in a very abstract way as well. And so through the lens of a documentary director, I just really appreciate the way that story is laid out, the way that um, uh, every director has a unique view of a, a different situation. I am personally looking for something that um, creates emotion in me, that um, really engages me, and that I also, I really like to feel empathy for the subjects that are in the film and um, appreciate um, someone who has a unique vision of seeing something. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a linear way of telling the story. It can be very visual. Um, I think the documentary category at Mammoth has been amazing in terms of the diversity of storytelling. When it comes to indie filmmaking, indie documentary or feature filmmaking, why is it still very important to have independent films? and encourage independent voices to keep producing, making these films? Well, I think for the same reason that it's really important in our culture to always be listening to um, voices that are sort of in the vanguard and um, mavericks, right? Um, because they tell a story about what is happening at the time um, in a way that's completely unique and can allow you to have sort of a cultural distance and be observational in a way that's um, really important to be able to codify culture and um, make critical decisions about what's happening in the world. What would you say are the challenges that independent filmmakers are still facing these days? Well, I think financing and distribution are the two big challenges. And when I'm at the festival, I often 
um, talk on a panel or meet young filmmakers and everybody is really struggling with both of those things. Um, I think it's really hard to find financing. That's, you know, you really just have to believe in your vision and figure out a way to make it with the resources that you have. And if you get lucky, you get lucky, right? Um, and I think distribution is difficult too. We've got a million different channels. It's hard to get eyeballs. Um, it's hard to know where your film will be seen and um, how, how to do it. But I just encourage filmmakers to always be the champion of their own films and um, to never give up on their visions. Next up, LA to Atlanta we go to talk to the filmmaker who won the Audience Award at Mammoth Lakes Film Festival last year. And here's that interview. Miles Triplett, thank you very much for making the time for us. How are you? Man, I'm doing good, brother. Out here in hot Atlanta, burning up a little bit. <laughs> uh, Miles, we want to talk about uh, your experience at Mammoth Lakes uh, Film Festival. Uh, your film, Social, won there. It won the Audience Award. Can you tell us how you found your way into that festival? Uh, yeah, man. So after we completed Social, I definitely wanted to try to do my best to have in like a good festival run. And I wanted to be in good festivals. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of crap festivals out there. And it's like, there's no point in even submitting to this. So I went to, on Film Freeway, they have the top 50, um, you know, worth the, worth the entry festivals. And Mammoth Lakes have been on there for like years. So I was like, well, okay, this is definitely one that I would definitely want to try to, I didn't even know where Mammoth Lakes was or any of that. But if Film Freeway is saying it's worth the entry and I was reading, um, the details on the festival like oh okay this looks like something i was looking at the scenery and stuff like okay this looks like you know something dope i would want to be a part of so i submitted to it and yeah you know what i'm saying luckily we was able to get in <laughs> uh, your film social can you tell us what the film is about that that's the film that won the award absolutely so social is a romantic comedy about a guy who has social anxiety and he meets a girl who has ADD and both of them go off on an adventure together to find his ex-girlfriend because that's the only girl he, um, he didn't have social anxiety around. And how'd you come up with that idea? Man, uh, so, <laughs> uh, so as a, um, you know, a hustling filmmaker, I also lift drive and whatnot. And I had a passenger who tried to get me to go out with him um you know like on a, on a friend date and because he he did you know for, after he got out the car he just seemed like a very lonely person to me and it just made me start thinking about yo what type of person do you have to be to really get in this stranger's car and ask this stranger because it's not like I was it's not like we was conversating it's not like I gave him you know good conversation I don't even know this man's name or nothing like that but he just randomly asked like hey you want to go out you want to do something and it was just like it was very weird to me. So when I got home, I started thinking about, man, like maybe he probably has some type of either mental issue or as an adult, it's very hard to make friends sometimes. So it's like he probably could have been desperate for friendship. And so after that ride, I just kind of started developing the film and I always wanted to do a romantic comedy. So I just kind of chose that genre to explore. What can you tell us about the vibe, the atmosphere at the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival? Man, when I say it's, it's still to this day the best festival I've ever been to. And I've been to a, a good amount of festivals all over the country. But the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival, the environment is so welcoming. It's so 
different. It's so it's such a a, a good filmmaking vibe, if that makes any sense. It's such the the filmmakers festival that they're not even concerned about um or well they're, they're concerned about doing everything in their power to make the filmmaker feel welcome and get as many eyes as possible um on their film as po- as possible and it's 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 uh weird to me because a lot of festivals would just leave it up to the filmmaker it's like hey if some people come they come if they don't they don't but it's like mammoth flakes makes it a, a mission to make sure people know about your film and even the area of Mammoth Lakes, it's like, you know, it's five hours from LA. Like it's very far and off in the mountains and deep off in the cut. And it's like, they're making it a mission to bring films to this very secluded place to, to people who might not, you know, saying get a chance to, to be around this type of stuff. And it's, yeah, man, overall, it's just a very welcoming um, vibe that they, they give. And it's, you just, you want to come back. And this is the um, Audience Award for Best North American Feature. And that goes to Social. I'm so glad he decided to cast me because he almost casted himself. I was going to cast myself, but I said, I mean, Gary might as well play this. And he did an amazing job. This was his first time doing a, a full feature film as a lead role. In. It's incredible to be out here. This is my first film festival ever. And to win an award first time there, it's just mind blowing. Your film won the Audience Award. Why do you think it won? Man, hey, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> um, I think, ah, oh, man, like you already got me. I think Social won the Audience Award because, <sighs> honestly, I think people might have really been able to relate to it um, more so than, I guess, the other films that were there. Like, it was a very, it dealt a lot with mental health issues, and that's, and in a way, that's not um, a drag. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it wasn't a drama. It was a comedy. So it's like, when I wrote the film, I tried to make it to where we're not making fun of people with, you know, mental health issues. We're making it relatable. It's like, hey, everybody in this world has some type of issue. So it's like somebody, somebody in the movie, you could probably relate to. And I feel like maybe that's kind of why, because after the screening, we have people, you know, coming up to us, just like, yo, I saw myself as that person. I saw myself as that person so if i had to guess I, I would just guess maybe that's why like it was a lot more relatable to the audience and they just really took it in and, and loved it uh, since mammoth lakes has your life as a filmmaker changed did it make something happen for you uh what's life after mammoth lakes film festival been like uh well for the first part it's the way i look at uh, film festivals is different. It's like Mammoth Lake sets the bar so high for film festivals. It's like you don't want to go to anything but those type of festivals. Mm-hmm. So it's like in the past when I've submitted my films, I would just submit, you know, to any festival and just pray that I get into it. But now I'm just being a lot more specific as far as who I would submit to because I want I want I want to be I want to be on that same type of treatment. It's a lot harder, obviously, but that's just something that I would personally want. And then even with social, we were able to get distribution from it. Like even when when social got accepted to Mammoth Lakes uh, Film Festival, we had distributors reaching out to us because they were on Mammoth, Mammoth Lakes website. Like, hey, I saw your film got accepted into this uh, festival. You know what I'm saying? I'm a distributor. Let's talk some, uh, about distribution. But at the time, we were still doing the whole festival run. So it's like I didn't, I wasn't able to, you know, follow up on those things until after um, we were done. So uh, starting this year, we were able to get social distributed on um, a streaming platform to be, and it's now able, you know, to be seen across the country with the click of a button. So Mammoth Flex definitely, it really, Mammoth Flex gave me a different mindset more so than changing my career, just how I want to go about presenting myself to festivals. Amazing and very inspiring. Uh, Master, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us for this chat. And we hope to see you maybe with your new film at Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. 
I hope because I'm submitting it, man. <laughs> I only hope so. I want to yeah. come back. Yes, yes. We'll we'll keep our we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. Yes, I'm coming back, man. There are many aspects of filmmaking that need a lot of attention and not every filmmaker knows how to do every single task. To address some of those concerns, we visited with Slated here in Southern California, who are also one of the festival sponsors this year. Greg, thank you very much for meeting with us. Uh, tell me, what is Slated about? Well, thank you so much for reaching out, and it's so good to meet with you here. Um, so Slated is an online platform for filmmakers to get their movies made. And what that looks like is that we help uh, writers, directors, and producers connect with investors, sales companies, and distributors in order to get those films financed and released. So we have, we have 60,000 film members that are part of the marketplace, and 2,000 of those are film investor companies. So Greg, uh, I can't help but ask this question because we're standing in, a, in front of a building where uh, some Hollywood films and indie films were shot. Lady Bird was shot here at, uh, at this cafe. Uh, it's famous for that mostly. Uh, is Slated uh, a company that uh, helps indie films or is it for films at any budget? That's a very good question. Uh, we get filmmakers from all walks of life, so we, we help a lot of independent filmmakers with small micro-budget films that are sometimes their first, you know, their directorial debut. We also help uh, studio films, larger films, 20 million and above, that are, maybe they have their cast, they have their package, they have everything all together, but they need some additional financing, whether that's debt or co-financiers, and we work with a lot of funds and institutional investors for the larger stuff too. And at what stage do filmmakers bring their film to you? That's another good question. So the, so the answer to that is basically any stage works. I've heard filmmakers describe Slated as a match.com for film investing. And that is definitely a, a critical component of what we do. We help movies get financed and out the door. But most people, if you've made an independent film before or a studio film, you know there are so many steps in order to make your film investable for financiers so that when you present the film to them, they go, not only am I interested, but it looks ready for me to wire funds so that you can start making the movie. And so what Slated has become over the past you know, decade or so is a marketplace to help filmmakers no matter what stage you come at. If you're just a writer with a screenplay, we can help you with the entire process from the beginning to the end. We can help you find the right producer, the right directors. Uh, we can help advise on how you structure your financing, on casting. So we can take you through that whole process. And for the, as you might imagine, for projects that come to us where they're just a strong script, it may take many years to build that film, but that's sort of par for the course when it comes to independent financing. So uh, the short answer to your question is everything from the screenplay stage all the way to films in post that are just looking for distribution. And what do you do at Slated? Tell us a little, little bit about your job. My official title is Head of Development, and I've had that title for about seven years, but I wear many hats. Mm -hmm. So I'm also part of the executive producer team. On the EP team, we pick some of the best, highest scoring projects and we help advise them personally, we help them structure their financing, we make personal introductions to investors. Um, and that EP team, like we were discussing a moment ago, can service projects at various stages. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'm helping on the EP team send a project out for financing, sometimes I'm helping sell a movie. So I'll help in that arena. And then I also, perhaps most important in my roles is I oversee the analytics of the platform. Yes. So is there a film project that may not be a match uh, for Slated? Sure. So currently we do not handle short films or television projects. We handle feature films and again at any stage narrative and documentary as well. Mm -hmm. So if you have a documentary film that's in post or even if you have an idea for a documentary film and you're assembling the footage, we can advise in one way or another. We have a docs manager who can do consultations. Um, and if your film is in post and ready to sell, we can help you sell that film too. So mm -hmm. I've been really honored to be able to sell a lot of documentaries, set them up with distribution and make sure that they get seen by, the, by their audiences. We have about a film going into production every month and a film getting released every month. Right now we have two films shooting. We have a micro-budget film from a scrappy, you know, young group of filmmakers. And then we have a, um, a much bigger um, Sam Jackson and Uma Thurman action comedy filming right now uh, called The Kill Room. And that is the first time that those two actors have worked together in starring roles since Pulp Fiction. 
and we were able to co-finance that movie. So it's, it's, for me, what's really exciting is that we're able to achieve the small victories for filmmakers for whom that's a huge moment in their career, but we're also able to do the, you know, the cool stuff, the financial wins that you know, the big producers and the agencies all respect with where, where it comes to financing. Wow. Uh, what, would you, what would you say if people, people said, well, you guys are a studio then, like a studio, like your old, old studios in the classic era of Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, that's, so I'm flattered. And so I would say, I describe Slated as having the scope and scale of a studio, but the efficiency of a startup. So all of those movies that I just went through that were, where we're making dozens and dozens of films, our EP team is only four people. Really, it's kind of three full-time people. And we're working on about 100 films at different stages at any given time. So all of us work way, way more than we should. We all sleep far less than we should, but we all love our jobs and we all love working with one another. So that's what's fun. That's one of the most fun things about for me is we do very much feel like a virtual studio mm -hmm. because we can have films shooting in Toronto and Mexico and Dominican Republic and Puerto, and, uh, Puerto Rico all at the same time because we're EPs, um, but we can still be really positively involved and supportive of the filmmakers and their, their vision. So where we're unlike a studio is because we're executive producers on, on most of the stuff we work on, um, we, we don't have to dictate to the filmmakers the creative. In other words, we're not telling them make this more commercial or that more risque. We can service a really broad spectrum of different types of tastes and we can then you know, basically service the whole, the whole uh, wide array of audiences because we're saying, you filmmaker there with a really strange indie that probably you know, will have um, a more niche audience, we can help you make that movie for a certain budget while we're also making this broad faith-based movie or this broad comedy that'll connect with a lot more people. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I, I, get, I get it now. Uh, let's talk about the partnership between Slated and Mammoth Lakes Film Festival. How did Mammoth Lakes Film Festival uh, show up on your radar? So we have recently begun working with a select group of stellar uh, mid-sized film, film festivals like Mammoth Lakes. And uh, the, I'll start with the program that led us th there and then how we found them specifically. Mm -hmm. But we noticed that there were a lot of, whereas with the large film festivals like your Sundance and your Toronto we were talking a little bit about earlier a lot of the buyers will travel to those film festivals in order to make acquisitions but they don't have time to travel to all the excellent mid-sized film festivals they don't often have buyers represented there and so we realized that there are film festivals like Mammoth Lakes who are who are doing the difficult work they're doing the incredibly hard work of discovering those gems that may not have been discovered otherwise and those films deserve to sell at the festival as well and because we we work with 250 sales companies and buyers on any given week, we're in a really good position to work with someone like Shira and say, what are your picks for this year? Put them directly in front of buyers and ensure that they're getting a lot of offers at the same time, just the way a big film would at a big, at a, at a, at a large um, per, you know, festival. What led me to Mammoth Lakes in particular is as I was looking at all those film festivals that are sort of mid-size and have been around a while, uh, Mammoth Lakes kept coming up as one that filmmakers really love. It's been around eight years, so as, as you know, it is so hard to run a film festival and to run it well and to consistently pick good material and to have filmmakers really like you at the end of all of that hard work. It's really a labor of love. Yeah. And to be doing it for eight years and then to have the reviews that they have, I mean, if you go on Film Freeware or any other platforms to see the types of response the filmmakers give Mammoth Lakes, they're all so excited to be there. And I did, I did my due diligence as well. Beyond the ratings, you know, I saw the services that they were offering, the way they support filmmakers, the way that those events play out, look through the photos, and it was clear that Mammoth Lakes was just a fantastic experience. And they've been rated one of the top ranking film festivals worth the, the entry fee, right? So then when I spoke to Shira and she gave me the sort of personal side of it, I was like, we have to find a way to work together. And luckily she was really open-minded about what that could be. I want to thank you for spending your time with us learning about this year's festival. I am Hendrik Vartanian. Here at Brave New Hollywood, we want to thank our sponsors who made this show possible. LA Private Car Service with the best reliable VIP car service in town and our friends at Float Coffee Shop in Pasadena and Hollywood with their amazing mobile coffee bar. 
And we also want to thank this year's festival sponsors. Here they are. The Mammoth Lakes Film Festival could not have happened without their help. Thank you so much. I hope you purchased your tickets. I know I'm ready to see some great films. I wish you a happy festival and hope to see you all next year. <laughs>